Hey guys, what is going on, and welcome back to the Socratic Gaming channel. I'm your host, Original Bon Jovi, and today we're back with yet another addition to our history series. In these videos, we look at the development of our organization from its humble beginning on Star Wars Republic Commando up until last year on Call of Duty Black Ops 4. In this one, we're talking about a game that was either loved or hated, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. The 2017 COD season got off to a rough start. A lot of people were less than enthused by the thought of a third year playing with advanced movement, and for them, the only saving grace was Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered. I openly admit to being a jetpacker nowadays, but back then I was definitely one of the never IW folks. After about a day and a half on Infinite Warfare, I switched to MWR and remained there for the next few months. Our team was pretty well split between the two games, so each one became a division, with its own managers and stuff. Management was also divided by geography. We'd have different IW and MWR squads for both North America and Europe. It was a sprawling mess with a lot of people involved. In November 2016, someone by the name of Ethan Fargo, better known as Rebel1615, applied to the team. Within a week, he became our recruitment officer. Normally, I would never have considered promoting a new recruit like that, but it was pretty obvious to me that he knew what he was doing and had the passion needed for the job. With Rebel, Dampat, and Steve searching out fresh blood for the roster, Post Havoc replaced Meth and Razorblades as the North American leader, and Diz Wade became the first European director. Rebel and Diz Wade thought that we should change the name of the organization from Clan Scrata to Scrata Gaming, as the whole clan thing had become pretty redundant at that point, and I agreed. We all kind of gave up on MWR by the beginning of February, and expanded rapidly on Infinite Warfare. On any given night, we'd have six-man parties grinding for nukes to throw up on YouTube. Rebel envisioned a massive Scrata presence in the streaming world, and he and I would often stay up all night watching streamers on YouTube, making plans, recruiting, and thinking about the future. It was about that time that I bought my first Elgato, and really began working on my setup. Even though we started out streaming from our PS4s on YouTube with almost no idea what we were doing, the seeds were planted for something big to happen. Post Havoc and I went to MLG Atlanta that year, which was a really cool experience. That was where United took down Optic and won their first LAN event. Even though they did well online, no one saw that coming, especially because Silly was the only veteran player on the roster. I got to chat with Pristini and Clayster for a bit, ran into Pomage multiple times, and met Skump, Crimsex, Karma, and Formal. For someone who grew up watching the old COD videos from the original Optic House, that was like a dream come true. However, I also really enjoyed watching the open bracket games. We saw a lot of the matches that Lethal Gaming was involved in, and that was just super cool to be there for. Shortly after the event, Post Havoc stopped gaming to join the military, and Rebel replaced him as the North American director. Both the NA and EU divisions did super well in the spring and summer months. Persia, Just Too Easy, Kava, Steve, Citrin, Game With Ray, Unexplained Bacon, Phoenix Prime, Double J19, Sir Nubby, Dampat, and Lightning were some of our most active guys from the US and Canada, while Dis Wade, Rainmaker, Artex, Little Ethan, Boise, Christina Liu, iBlind HD, iDrop, On Point, and Braveheart represented us from across the pond. While not without difficulties here and there, those were some of the best times in our history that I can remember. Our YouTube game kind of sucked, and we weren't too consistent about it and didn't really have a clue what we were doing, but progress was being made and we had an awesome team to do it with. In June 2017, we had the first ever Scrata meetup in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I lived in Missouri at the time, so I drove north to Iowa, picked up Steve, then we went to stay at Kava's house for a week. We also visited Citroen, who lived out near Detroit. Although it wasn't a huge group, we definitely had a good time, and all brought our setups for a little LAN party. With that being said, we didn't get together IRL just to sit at home and play Call of Duty. That was the second time I'd met up with anyone from the gaming world, so it spawned a lot of memorable experiences, to say the least. In the summer, we co-sponsored a tournament with a lot of the old Republic Commando players, and that was kinda cool. We also launched the first season of our Plays of the Week series in August, and continued it until mid-October. With Call of Duty World War II on the horizon, vibes were at an all-time high. By now I think we've learned to stop getting our hopes up for new COD games, but at that time we were all young and full of hope. Unfortunately that would be short-lived. The disastrous launch of World War II was preceded by something none of us could have imagined. Scrata Rebel, our North American director, died after suffering a motorcycle accident in his hometown of Concord, New Hampshire. 
The accident actually happened just a couple days before I was supposed to fly out and hang with him for my fall break. Instead, I flew out for his funeral a week later. Honestly, this topic deserves its own video, and I'm not too sure I even want to make one. I talked about it a lot already in the 2017 year in review video, which I'll link in the description if you care to watch it. Rebel's death was a depth charge in this organization. He was one of those super charismatic, passionate, committed people who knew what he wanted and was willing to do what it took to get there. Kind of like the glue that held everything together in our team. We raised something like $500 for his family by doing a charity stream, and the Scrata clan tag changed from SG to 1615 as a nod to Rebel, because his full username was Rebel1615. But when you lose that cohesion, things are never the same again. Rightfully so, I guess. Steve ended up taking his spot as North American director going into World War II. We'll talk about that more next week, though. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave us a like, comment down below, and sub for more Call of Duty content each week. I'm Original Bon Jovi, and I'll catch you later. Peace. I still I have it downloaded. I just never played it. Watch chat. Somebody's gonna come right here. Laser. When you played this map, when you played this Call of Duty for a while, you kind of know where people peak.